Hey there, folks. I'm going to be talking about John Wayne's 1960s Western. Why the 1960s? Well, that was the decade I was a young kid growing up. And my dad took me to see a lot of these movies in the theater, either during first release or reruns in the theater. It was on the great big screen. It was wonderful. My dad was a big fan of Westerns, and so was I. And uh, John Wayne Westerns were the ones I seemed to remember the most. They seemed to be the biggest to me at the time. Of course, John Wayne made a lot of Westerns in the 30s and 40s and 70s, too. Great Westerns. The ones in the 60s were the ones I remember the most from being a kid. And they really, really stuck with me, you know. He made 11 Westerns. He was in 11 Westerns in the 1960s. One of which I'm not going to uh, include in my ranking. I'm going to rank these Westerns uh, according to how much I like them. But the, the one I'm not going to include is the following one. How the West Was Won. Great, great movie. I love it. And the reason I'm not going to include it is because John Wayne was only in the movie for maybe four or five minutes. He only had a few lines. It was just a cameo, pretty much. Great, great movie with uh, the directors John Ford, Henry Hathaway, George Marshall, Richard Thorpe. Very influential to me as a kid. Uh, I remember going home after these movies and I lived uh, near uh, in woods and uh, cornfields and all around my house and I used to go and play out all the movies when I was a kid. I used to love it. And this movie is fantastic. It has gorgeous scenery from Illinois, Kentucky, South Dakota, Colorado, Arizona, Utah, Oregon, California. It's amazing. It was 164 minutes long and it was in Cinerama. Cinerama which was a great big screen. It was basically two screens, a huge screen. If you rent the DVD, uh, you can discern a little line right down the middle. And uh, that was pretty much because it was on separate screens. I believe it was down the middle. But anyhow, fantastic music by Alfred Newman, who was the uncle of Randy Newman. And multiple cinematographers, Daniels, Krasner, Lang, Lachelle, great cinematographers. You know, it's about this family that uh, goes out west and you know it basically covers two or three or four generations of this family my favorite scenes were the the opening with the the river boat I, I remember that one the most being most influential anyhow so this this movie was a john wayne western i guess but it really wasn't uh, so we're going to start off with uh, the ones that were proper john wayne westerns before i do let me say that there's a lot of commonalities in John Wayne Westerns in the 1960s, except for one film that I'll talk about here. All of these have brilliant and vibrant cover, colors. Even my daughter and wife, uh, who don't care for Westerns much, have commented on many times when I'm watching these movies how beautiful they look. Beautiful. There's always such crisp cinematography, marvelous scenery, great locations, uh, expert directions uh, by uh, genuine masters of the craft, great directors. Uh, powerful and beautiful music by some of the finest film composers. You always have romantic components in, in these films, and, but usually you had stunningly gorgeous actresses, so I never minded that. <laughs> and of course, the requisite teen heartthrob or pop, pop singer or you know, sports star was usually included for the purpose of drawing in the, the younger or female members of the audience. Also, there was humor, sometimes laugh out loud humor was found in most of these films as well as a typical uh, buddy or camaraderie component even sometimes between adversaries and these movies were not politically correct films by today's standards no no these are old school films for viewers who appreciate and relate to old school values and outlooks regarding character self-reliance chivalry uh, pride in your country and genuinely earn respect over easy gain and dubiously titled non-entities those type of characters, you know, are, are treated with disdain in these old movies. And that's one of the reasons I like these movies as well. Okay, so let's get started. My number 10 ranking, the lowest one. Now, keep in mind, I like all of these movies, all of them. But I got to rank them somehow, right? It's fun. And this first one that I'm going to rank, the lowest ranked, is going to surprise some people. And it's The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. No. So people say, are you crazy? That's a classic film. And that's true. I agree. It's a classic film. It's a great film. I just don't think it's a great Western. It's basically a preachy morality tale set in the 1800s along the lines of the Oxbow Incident. Another great film that I don't think is a great Western. I don't even consider this a Western hardly. Uh, it could have been a stage play. It could, you, could, you could act this stage play uh, you know, downtown in the community theater. 
it's very theatrical in its sets and it's all interior shots pretty much hardly no out exteriors uh, it's very theatrical in the acting style um, it doesn't it doesn't have some of the things I consider most valuable in westerns those exterior shots the horses uh, it just just doesn't feel like a western to me it's black and white and it it seems like a movie made in the 1940s or something even though it was made in 1962 I never thought Jimmy Stewart was that convincing in westerns personally I know he made some great Anthony Mann westerns don't get me wrong I do enjoy those westerns but I just never thought he was that convincing in westerns he's a good actor but I don't know and uh, basically it's about liberty violence of course and who shot him you know, it's kind of a thug you know like I say it's a good morality play good stage theatrical type movie but yeah not my favorite western I know I'm wrong but there you go okay number nine 1960s North to Alaska directed by the great Henry Hathaway by the way the man who shot Liberty Valance of course was directed by the great John Ford Henry Hathaway is one of my all-time favorite directors fantastic this movie starts off quite good uh, great scenery and locations uh, witty dialogue and humorous scenes um, you know but basically it's rom romantic comedy really it's about Sam and George striking gold in Alaska George sends Sam to Seattle to bring George's fiance back to Alaska. Sam gets there to Seattle, finds out that uh, his fiance is already married to someone else, and so he returns instead with Angel, who's played by Capucine there. And uh, then a Sam falls in love with Angel instead of George, and then also George's younger brother Billy falls in love with Angel. You know, it's just one of those type of things, you know. Capucine was in Pink Panther, if you recall. <laughs> It's a, it's a silly, even madcap uh, comedy. Um, it's got Fabian. Let's see. There's Stuart uh, Granger and John Wayne. And there's Fabian. He was the requisite teen heartthrob that was in the movie. And his, his presence in the movie is really kind of silly. But whatever. It is what it is. The great scenery of the, of the movie. It's, it's filmed in the Yukon, Canada, as well as several great places in California, like Mammoth Lakes and Big Bear Lake great scenery however that great scenery is constantly um, flip-flop back back and forth with painted backdrops and sets so you get a painted backdrop and then the real scenery then a painted backdrop and then an indoor scene and then an outdoor scene that's fake and then an outdoor scene that's real back and forth back and forth at a dizzying rate it's such a shame because Hathaway is such a fine director who's somewhat wasted here cinematography by Leon Shamroy uh, he didn't do a lot of westerns but he did movies like planet of the apes and agony and the ecstasy and cleopatra uh, we got music by lionel newman uh, who's the uncle of randy newman he's another uncle of Ray randy newman <laughs> just like uh, alfred newman was anyhow it's, it's fun it's a good movie i enjoy it but it's uh, number nine on my list number eight is comanchero comancheros 1961 Directed by Michael Curtis and John Wayne, uncredited. That's about Texas Ranger who uh, he arrests a gambler, but soon finds himself teamed up with this prisoner in an undercover effort to defeat a band of renegade arms merchants and thieves known as Comancheros, who basically are a secret society. Uh, you know, that live out in the desert, basically. You know, it's okay. Uh, Stuart Whitman and Lee Marvin, who's in the movie, maybe five minutes. And Jack Elam, I love Jack Elam. Uh, Edgar Buchanan, he's great. You've got a beautiful Joan O'Brien and, and Ina Balin, the, the, the black-haired beauty there. Uh, William Clothier is a cinematographer on this film and, and about, about five of these films, uh, in this 10 films. Uh, his name actually was included on the hotel register. If you watch the movie and you see them signing in at the hotel, you'll see, you'll see some of the, the behind-the-scenes folks listed in the registry. Music is by um, the great, great Elmer Bernstein. Beautiful, wonderful music in this movie. Uh, great locations in Utah and Arizona. It starts off quite good, but it devolves somewhat to a narrative absurdity, in my opinion, by the ending. Um, the Comanchero camp, you know, here's, here's those uh, actors. Um, you see the gorgeous uh, uh, Ina ba Balin there, and Stuart Whitman. And you see at this camp, um, you see torture, you know, people being hung, people being stretched. You see uh, people crying over the torture, 
but it seems to be just going on in the background while you have romantic elements and humor and it just seems out of place i just didn't think it was great even john wayne and um stuart whitman are hung for a, a, quite a considerable period of time and then when they cut them down oh everything's fine they just walk around like nothing's good in real life they'd, they'd have to be in the bed for a few days but anyhow it's just kind of silly it, it devolves to that kind of thing and it's a shame because you know it, it should have been a much better movie for instance there's a couple of um fights with attacking indians and the comancheros that just go on and on and on way too way too long uh, it's basically you know the good guys quote uh, shooting the bad guys like they were shooting in a shooting gallery you know bam 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 shooting them down and of course the good guys never get hit you know so it's, it's kind of silly but you know it could have been better if the direction and the script and the editing were up to par to match the beauty of the film it was really a beautiful film anyhow that's number eight number seven is the great el dorado howard hawks film it's about a gunfighter for hire who joins forces with his old friend a sheriff uh, together with an indian fighter and a gambler they help a rancher and his family fight a rival rancher that's trying to steal their water <laughs> so you know it's a good movie um you got robert mitchum here uh, he's a great uh, sh character in the movie but i've got some issues with the character which i'll mention here in a minute uh, this is similar to 1959's rio bravo which is also directed by hawks it looks great great colors uh, clarity in the picture just beautiful filmed in arizona the first half was marvelous outdoor scenery great sets great the second half i mean the entire second half was indoors at night indoor sets at night it's just uh the outdoor scene or really just a set at night it looked, looked very cheap uh, it was kind of plodding a little bit silly um yeah i don't know here's the characters a lot of good paper that people there you got to mitchum you know you got john wayne you know some really good folks in this movie um james khan here's james khan there he's kind of a silly dapper fellow there he just appears out of nowhere early in the film and starts a fight with four or five tough guys in a bar with just his knife and he throws his knife in one of them and now he's facing the other four with with nothing yeah it's kind of stupid and he decides to hang around with john wayne for some reason and risking his life over i guess that gal there that pretty gal played by michelle carey <laughs> why not right i didn't buy the fact that the tough robert mitchum character the sheriff character went from being a you know rugged tough guy to becoming a pitiable town drunk over some gal leaving him I, that didn't make any sense to me that pretty girl there in the red up at the top is charlene holt uh, of course she's more interested in uh, john wayne you know because you know john wayne always got the girl even if he was old enough to be his, their, her daddy <laughs> but whatever great great music by nelson riddle great theme song this could have been much much better if half the movie was not you know like a sure like an hour of the movie was not you know on in sets at night time that was just cheap shouldn't have done that the next movie number six on my list is 1963's mcclintock directed by andrew mclaughlin i like andrew mclaughlin good good director it's about a wealthy rancher george washington mcclintock uses his power and influence in the territory to keep peace between the farmers ranchers and land grabbers and indians and corrupt government officials and everybody <laughs> oh boy a lot of these well i shouldn't say a lot but three of these movies on this 10 uh, movie list uh, had a star patrick wayne which was uh, john wayne's uh, son and this movie actually was actually produced by michael wayne which is his oldest son um yeah it's pretty good it's filmed in arizona nice scenery pretty good the best way to describe this movie is it's rollicking it's just a lot of fun this movie makes me laugh out loud in several places it's got slapstick funny dialogue sarcasms cut downs tongue-in-cheek commentary that that big fight that you see there the big fight uh, in the mud pit that is really funny stuff i laugh out loud every time i see it it's funny uh chill wills plays drago and he's hilarious when he winces every time he puts his foot in his mouth and then you have the Chinese cook Ching. He's hilarious every time he accuses the McClintock clan as being crummy family, crummy family. <laughs> it's hilarious. Jerry Van Dyke's in it. Uh, he's good. Edgar Buchanan, Hank Warden, the lovable Hank Warden, and Strother Martin are great. Maureen O'Hara and Stephanie Powers are, are beautiful, and they're in the movie. 
uh, including also Yvonne DiCarlo, you know, she's a great in the movie as well. I, I love seeing the, the scene where John Wayne, Yvonne DiCarlo, and Maureen O'Hara, or their stunt doubles, that is, uh, repeatedly tumble down the stairs together. I just laugh at, out loud at that. It's just a lot of funny stuff like that. Really funny. The only thing that's kind of corny, bad about it was when uh, they have a little side story about these Comanches and, and they raid on the town, you know, but it was very short and I don't know why they even bothered having that. It's kind of silly. Good cinematography by William Clothier again. Uh, good music, if not memorable music, but good music by Frank Duvall. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Number five, 1967's The War Wagon, starring Bert, I mean, uh, directed by Bert Kennedy. He's a good director. Story of a man who was shot, robbed, and imprisoned, who returns to steal a large gold shipment from the man who wronged him. The gold is transported in an armored stagecoach. That's really cool. You see that armored stagecoach there with the Gatling gun? Awesome. Uh, it's a great adversarial buddy movie with great scenery filmed in Sonora and Durango, Mexico. Great sets, crisp and bright colors, as you can see there. Uh, Kirk Douglas' leather-clad ring over his gloves, wearing flirty guy, saddle-jumping, you know. It's kind of frivolous. It's kind of eye-rolling, but it's still fun. It was meant to be funny. It meant to be silly, and that, that's fine. Um, we got a gorgeous uh, Joanna Barnes there, you see, and uh, Valera Nolan, another beautiful actress. Uh, good dialogue, good humor, great action, good music by Dimitri Tiomkin, a great film composer. And again, great cinematography by William Clothier. Okay, number four is 1965's The Sons of Katie Elder, uh, directed by Henry Hathaway again. Here we have the ranch owner, uh, Katie Elder, her four sons, determined to avenge the murder of their father and the swindling of their mother. Oh, yeah. It's a great Hal Wallace production. Great scenery, great sets. Elmer Bernstein music is fantastic. I wish the final scenes were not played out at night in, on a set, but at least it's not the half half of the movie like on um, El Dorado. I always liked Dean Martin, even back in Rio Bravo. I thought he was great, and he's great here. So is uh, Earl Holloman, Michael Anderson Jr. You've got um, bad guy George Kennedy in it for a short period of time. Dennis Hopper. I like the idea of a strong mother figure that is such that has such influence on everyone she touches, even though you don't see her. You just see these her sons there. You don't see her. She's not in the movie. The rocking chair scenes in the movie are very touching. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Again, great Elmer Bernstein music again, filmed in Mexico and Durango, Colorado. Cinematography this time by Lucien Ballard. Good, good stuff. Number three, the uh, 1969's The Undefeated, directed by Andrew McLaughlin. After the Civil War, ex-Confederate soldiers heading for a new life in Mexico run into ex-Union cavalrymen selling horses to the Mexican government, but they must join forces to fight off Mexican bandits and revolutionaries. It's a good movie. It's got Rock Hudson there, you see. You got Rock Hudson and Roman Gabriel, the, the, the Indian fellow on the sitting down there. I grew up in North Carolina, so when I saw this movie in the theater, I was in North Carolina, <clears throat> and Roman Gabriel, who was an L.A. Rams quarterback at the time, he grew up in North Carolina as well. I went to NC State, which was my alma mater, and my dad's alma mater, and my sister's alma mater, so of course I was tickled to see him in this movie. Kind of silly to have him in the movie, but it was, it was fine. Uh, it was uh, filmed in Sonora, Mexico. Uh, music by Hugo Montenegro, very, very wonderful theme song to the movie. Uh, thank goodness, because they play that same eight bars over and over throughout the entire movie. So thankfully, it's, it's a good theme song. Otherwise, it would drive you crazy like water torture. Um, anyhow, but it's good. A very good storyline about the unavoidable separations caused by war and the healing necessary when common enemies are encountered. The Roman Gabriel romance side story was a little bit cheesy. Uh, it was, but it was not overly so. It was fine. Lots of great action scenes, some fine dialogue, some of it quite moving, uh, with a few laugh out loud moments. Okay, number two is 1960's The Alamo, directed by John Wayne himself. <clears throat> I don't need to tell you what this story is about. You already know it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's a marvelous epic of the genre, in my opinion. you got Wayne, Widmark, Harvey, Boone, great actors. We get a pre-Festus Hagen Ken Curtis, 
the always amusing Chill Wells, the dependable Hank Warden and Charles Aikens, and so many others. <clears throat> Just look at these guys. Just great, great actors. And to me, one of the best uh, parts of the entire movie is the stunning actress Linda Crystal. And some of you recognize her from the High Chaparral TV series. Great, great TV series. Also, Joan O'Brien. And you have Frankie Avalon. you got to have the, uh, you know, the teen idol. And we have Frankie Avalon here. This was filmed on location in Texas. Great music by Dimitri Tiomkin, including the beautiful song, The Green Leaves of Summer. Cinematographer again by William Clothier. The 203 minute director's cut I did not see when I was young. I most likely, I want to know, I saw the 140 minute theatrical re-release in 1967. That's what I saw and that's what I'm most familiar with. But the 203 minute uh, director's cut is worth seeing as well. What a good movie as far as I'm concerned. Okay, my number one. And I think you know what it is. 1969 True Grit, Grit by, uh, directed by Henry Hathaway. Man, what a great movie. It's my favorite movie of all time. Love it. A drunken, hard-nosed U.S. Marshal and Texas Ranger help a stubborn teenager track down her father's murderer in Indian Territory. Indeed. It's got the marvelous Kim Darby. I just I had a big crush on her when I was a kid. I was eight years old when this came out. <laughs> I just thought the world of her like tomboys, you know. Uh, Glenn Campbell, I thought the world of him as a singer. He wasn't a great actor, but he didn't destroy the movie. He was okay. Uh, you got Robert Duvall, Struther Martin, Dennis Hopper, Jeff Corey. That great final scene with John Wayne jumping the fence and leaving. Look at the scenery. Stunning scenery in Colorado and California. Magnificent. Favorite movie of all time. And there you have it, folks. You have the 10 John Wayne movies. Well, actually 11 if you include, uh, you know, uh, How the West Was Won. But that's my ranking of them. And uh, maybe I'll get around to doing the 70s movies, 70s movies uh, at some time as well. Hey, I had a lot of fun. Hope you did too. Talk to you later, folks. Bye.